Hello and a very good morning from my hotel room in the Czech city of Prague. Now today I'll be travelling the Czech national operator Seskodahy aboard one of their flagship super city services through to Kasica in Slovakia. Now this will be aboard one of their Pendolino trains as all their super city services are and take about 8 hours to get through to Kasica. So I think without further ado I'm going to head down to Praha Hlavy Nádraží, Prague main station and we will go catch the train to Slovakia. Join me! Now before we get the video started, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports not just every Friday but every Monday now as well. You'll find Praha Hlavy Nádraží just a short walk away from the city centre. The main entrance brings you into a relatively large concourse. This dates back to the 1970s and was last refurbished about 10 years ago. As buildings from the 70s go, I think it's quite nice and has certainly been spared of the brutalist architecture that has plagued other stations of the area. Yes, that's you I'm looking at, Euston. Large and clear departure boards can be found in several locations throughout the station, with information being displayed in Czech, German and English. Moving further into the station we find a large Seskodrahi travel centre. Now would probably be a good time to point out that it's not just possible but also advantageous to do as I have and purchase your tickets online and in advance to ensure that you're getting the best bang for your buck. Up on the mezzanine level you'll find some benches and whatnot to make use of while you wait for your train. There's also currently a Lego model of the station on display up here which I think is very cool, don't you? It's also up here on the mezzanine level that you'll find the bulk of the station's shops and eateries which, despite it only being about 6am, were even open at this ungodly hour. Head up the escalators and you won't be disappointed as you'll find yourself in the station's stunning original Art Nouveau building. This beautiful part of the structure dates back to 1909. Anyway, the time eventually comes for us to head over to the platform and await the arrival of our train. The service we'll be catching today is the 0630 to Kasitja, train number Supercity 241, the Kasitjan. We'll be departing from platform 4 this morning. As we make our way onto the platform, let's just take a moment to appreciate the rather impressive canopy that they are located beneath. I often think this is a somewhat underrated feature of Praha Hlavy Nádraží. Our train eventually ends up rocking up from the depot late at about 06.40. As I touched on at the start of the video, the service through to Kasitja will be operated by one of Seskadrahi's Class 680 Pendolinos. These were built by Alstom and entered service with the Czech national operator in 2005. Each unit is 7 carriages in length and were designed to operate at speeds of up to 230 km an hour or 143 mph. 
although they are currently only authorized for speeds of up to 200 km an hour or 124 miles per hour. And even this is never achieved in regular passenger service, at least not for now. Now I've booked a second class ticket for the ride through to Slovakia today, however it would appear that a very comfortable journey is still in store for us as even this is laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration. It is possible to select your seat from a seat map and I have chosen coach 1 seat 72 which is located in the train's quiet coach. Excuse me. We eventually depart Prague about 15 minutes late at 6.45am. As we pull out of the station, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us travelling east from Prague via Ostrava before crossing into Slovakia and continuing via the southern tip of the Tatra mountain range before we eventually arrive in Slovakia's second city, Kasice, for a total distance travelled of 705 kilometres or 438 miles. Our scheduled travel time today is 7 hours and 48 minutes and our top speed will be 160 kilometres an hour or 99 miles per hour. As we make our way out of central Prague, we get some good views of the city as the sun begins to rise. Prague is easily one of my favourite cities in Europe and I'd highly recommend visiting if you ever get the chance to. After a brief stop at Praha Liben, it's full speed ahead as we make our way towards Padovice and Ostrava. Now that we've made our way out of the Czech capital, I think it's time to take a closer look at what these seats have to offer. For a second class seat, legroom is really quite good I think. These seats also feature a footrest, a seat back pocket and a tray table. And yes, it was of the large and sturdy variety and even features an extension of sorts to allow it to better accommodate larger items such as laptops. You'll have to forgive me for the fact that the camera hasn't really picked this up at all, but take my word for it that there is a plug socket down here and it worked just fine. And down the side of the seat you'll find a small litter bin. Moving back up you'll find a lever that allows you to make use of the seat's excellent recline. I thought the seats themselves were fantastic. This is thanks to the fact that they're well padded, nicely shaped and very wide, thanks to Seska Drahi opting for a low density seating configuration throughout. Coat hooks can be found on the walls, although I'm struggling to recall a time that I've ever made use of these on any train. Should for whatever reason you find yourself wanting to block out the passing vistas, window blinds are provided. These are controlled electronically, which I think is a nice touch of class. Lastly, each seat also features a personal reading light which rounds off what I think is one of the best second class seats out there. Our first stop after departing Prague is Colin. 
The town dates back to the 13th century and is notable for its Gothic and Baroque styles of architecture. As we make our way out of Colin, we can see a number of different Seskadrahi trains. If you're enjoying this video and want to see what else the world of Seskadrahi has to offer, then be sure to check out my friend Nonstop Euro Trips video on their railjet service. A link to his video can be found in the top right corner of the screen now, as well as in the description below. Next up for us today is Padubica. Interestingly, the city has a cooperation agreement with East Lothian in Scotland. Just after departing Padubica Hlavi Nadrži, be sure to keep an eye out for the lovely Supercity mural that has been painted on the side of one of the buildings. An at-seat service of drinks and snacks is offered on this train. There's also a buffet car which offers a more extensive menu, but I'll touch a little bit more on that later. Eventually, we arrive in Olomolts. The city is situated on the Moravia River and is known for its Holy Trinity Column, which has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site since the year 2000. Ok, time for a wander to go and see what our Seskadrahi's Pendolinos have to offer. In Coach 2 you'll find First Class. As you can see this is also in a 2 plus 1 configuration, with the main advantages over Second Class being that the seats are adorned with a nicer upholstery and some food and drink are included in your fare. Next up is the buffet car where you can purchase hot meals as well as drinks and snacks. Beyond the buffet car, the remainder of the train is made up of more second class coaches. In coach 4 you'll find a large accessible toilet as well as spaces for wheelchair users. You'll also find the family area for those travelling with young kids in this coach. It's worth noting that space on the large luggage stacks is somewhat limited and my cabbage doesn't even have any. In addition to this, the overhead racks are really quite small so unfortunately sometimes the only option is to store your bags next to your seat. I must say, I really like the interiors on these trains. I think the blue works really well and the highlights on the wall look very nice indeed. These trains were last refurbished between 2017 and 2018. You'll find toilets situated in the vestibules at one end of each coach. And I found everything was pretty clean, well stocked and in good working order so no complaints from me at all. One last thing, Coach 4 also has space for up to 3 bicycles. These must be reserved and the price you'll pay depends on how far you're travelling, but it costs 75 crowns to reserve a space from Prague to Kasitsha. As expected, this train is kitted out with complimentary Wi-Fi. I couldn't get my usual speed test to work, but the speed seemed alright to me. 
On the way back to my seat, I decided to grab some breakfast of sorts from the buffet. I went for the rather tasty chicken schnitzel with potato salad and a Pepsi. Total cost was 194 crowns, which I don't think is too bad as far as on-train prices go. We're soon at our next calling point of Ostrava Spinoff, which is located in the outskirts of the Czech Republic's third largest city. A few moments later, we arrive at the city's main station, Ostrava Hlavi Nádraží. Once an important part of the Austrian Empire, thanks to an abundance of coal in the surrounding area, the city is now home to around 285,000 people. Next up is Czeski Teshin. While we never actually cross into neighbouring Poland, this is about as close as we get, with the Polish town of Czeszyn being located on the other side of the Olza River. Czeszyn is just the Polish translation of Czesin, hence the town on the Czech side of the river literally translates to Czech Czesin in English. This is also our last stop in the Czech Republic. I sure love it when you can see the whole train stretching out in front of you as you round a curve. One thing I should mention is that this train tilts as it takes on corners, hence the name Pendolino. The train is able to tilt by up to 8 degrees, although this is limited to 6.5 degrees within the Czech Republic, and this allows for curves to be taken at higher speeds while still providing a comfortable passenger experience. The tilting mechanism must be pretty good as I hardly noticed it at all. Around half an hour after departing Szeski Tessin, we arrive in the town of Chadza, which is our first stop in Slovakia. We'll be stopped here for around five minutes while our Szeska Drahi crew leaves us to be replaced by a team provided by the Slovak national operator ZSSK, who will operate the train for the remainder of the journey to Kasitja. Our next stop is Jelina. This is Slovakia's fourth largest city and its name literally means a place with many watercourses, a reference to the fact that there are several rivers nearby, the most notable of which being the Var. The scenery really begins to pick up as we skirt the southern tip of the Malafatra mountain range. We're now running alongside the reservoir Liptovska Mara. It was built in the 60s and 70s and takes its name from one of the villages which was destroyed as a result of its construction.
Visible off in the distance now is the southern tip of the stunning Tatra mountain range. Well, not the biggest mountain range out there, only measuring in at 785 square kilometres or 303 square miles, they do form a natural border between Slovakia and Poland. About an hour out of Kasitja, we stop in the city of Poprad. You can change here for the Tatra Electric Railway, which is a meter gauge line running from here up into the mountains. Eventually, we arrive at our final calling point, Kisak. You can change here for services to the city of Plesov. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my time aboard the Sheska Drahi Super City Pendolino. This is really a case of second class feeling like first. The seats offered an amazing level of comfort, and the 2 plus 1 configuration throughout, while perhaps a tad unusual, was certainly appreciated. And the option to buy some not just nice, but also affordable food on board was certainly an added bonus. To be honest, this is probably Sheska Drahi's best train, at least in my opinion. So, how much can you expect to pay to ride aboard the Czech Republic's best train? I paid just 468 Czech crowns for my one-way ticket. That's about £15.60, $21 or €18.50. Needless to say, for a journey of over 700 kilometres, I think that represents exceptional value for money, especially when you consider that this is on par with most first class products out there. For reference, first class on this train is around double the cost of second class at about 950 crowns. So yes, I thought these trains were really fantastic, but what did you make of it? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And with that, welcome to Kasitja, where we arrive around 7 minutes late at 25 past 2 in the afternoon. Well, that was a lovely ride across from Prague and arrived here in Kasitja about seven minutes late. Um, yeah, great trains, great seats. They're one of the best second class seats I think I ever sat in. The two plus one configuration was, you know, really nice to have in second class. It's not usually a luxury you have. And the buffet car was all right. And yeah, generally a very good train. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next Friday.